Whitney, and I'm with the Environmental Volunteers. And today we are going to go on an exploration of the earthquake trail here at the Montebello and Los Trancos Open Space Preserves. Now, how many of you have felt an earthquake? What did that feel like? If you're at home watching this with friends and family, why don't you talk to them about what it was like to feel an earthquake? Now, how about we head down the trail? Today, we're going to be hiking on the native lands of the Ohlone people. Where you're watching this video, do you know what the native lands are? If you don't, you can look it up online. Earthquakes have been happening on this planet since it existed. And initially, human beings would try to explain earthquakes by coming up with these stories. For example, the Ohlone people that lived here had a story about the earth sitting on the back of sea turtles. And when the turtles moved, that caused the earthquake. Now today, we all know that the earth is not on the back of a bunch of sea turtles. But the question is, how did scientists figure out what's really going on? One of the first things they did was they went for a hike out in an area like this, and they would find things that they would think were just weird. And then they went back to their labs and developed experiments and models to help figure it out and explain what causes earthquakes. Today, we're going to be exploring and looking for clues about earthquakes. When we find things, it might be something that looks a little weird in the environment. The same things that scientists thought were weird. And when we find them, we're gonna look at them more closely and see what we can learn about them. Come with me. Wow, check out that view. I just love coming to earthquake country to be able to see things like that. What I'd love you to do is find yourself a piece of paper and a pencil and take some time to draw what you're seeing on the screen. Draw any details that you see, but since we're thinking about earthquakes today, pay close attention to the shape of the land. And if you need more time, feel free to pause the video. So what did you notice? What did you draw? Did you see all of the rows and rows and rows of hills? The land is so bumpy right here. These are called pressure ridges, and this is an indication that we're in earthquake country. Let me show you another picture. This is a picture of pressure ridges in an area called the Carrizo Plain. Do you see the flat area on the left? and then the long line with all of the wrinkles going along each side of the line. Those wrinkles are pressure ridges. So scientists see this in a place like Carrizo Plain where it's obvious, and then they come here to Montebello and they realize it might be the same. Now, scientists have a new tool that allows them to see it even with all of the trees. This is a satellite image of where we are with all the trees and everything. This is a picture using LIDAR. This is a tool where the computer does a bunch of calculations and removes all of the trees, leaving just the shape of the land. Without the trees, do you see the fault line and all the pressure ridges? I have a very simple model that will help demonstrate how the movement of the earth created all of these pressure ridges. Check it out. So this paper has slits down the middle, and I'm going to move it in the direction of the arrows. What do you think is going to happen? Do you see the wrinkles in the paper? The same thing is what happened in the land. Now let's go find our next earthquake clue. Wow. 
look at that. It's a little different, isn't it? I want you to get that piece of paper and pencil again and draw what you see on the screen, just like you did before. Only this time, pay particularly close attention to the plants. So what did you notice? What did you draw? Did you see all of these bright green plants? The tall grasses, those are cattails. And then down lower, we have these plants with large green leaves. And even this really cool horsetail fern. These are all plants that require a lot of water. So if they're growing here, there's water here all the time. I happen to know that there is a spring up the hill just a little bit. If that spring is on the side of the hill, the water's just gonna run all the way down the hill. But we happen to see that there is an indentation where the water collects. How did that indentation form? I have this model here to demonstrate how a sag pond forms. Now, if you imagine the San Andreas Fault coming through this area and it has a bit of a curve. When the ground moves in the direction of these arrows around that curve, a hole forms. It's not a hole to the center of the earth, it does fill up with dirt. But that is how that sag pond formed. Check out this picture of a sag pond at the Carrizo Plain, the same place we talked about earlier. This one is really easy to see because there's no trees or plants. That also means it's really easy to see the hills on either side that form the pond. Every once in a while, this fills up with water. All right, let's keep going. Our next stop is the bench. reached a place on the trail called a bench. This is going to be one of the most challenging things to see here at Los Trancos, but it's kind of cool. Right now where I'm standing, what does the ground do behind me? See how it goes up really high? So the land comes down and flattens out right here, but come with me and check this out. From this flat area, do you see how the land stretches out way down below us from here? Do you see these big trees that start far below us? Here's a picture to help explain how a bench forms. This picture is taken from the 1906 earthquake near Point Reyes, California. Now, this hill was originally one slope, but the earthquake moved the hill this way, breaking the land. Over time, more and more earthquakes stretch this farther and farther, but erosion comes in and wears down the broken land and smooths it out, leaving the bench. This is a picture of a bench from the Carrizo Plain. We've added some lines to help you see it, but could you just imagine a giant sitting down right here to take a rest? All right, let's go. The next stop is the most fun. Check this fence out. Do you see how the fence moves from here to over there? Would anyone really build a fence that way? Probably not. What happened was the earthquake. In 1906, this fence was actually standing over the earthquake fault. And when the earth moved, it broke the fence. So how far did the ground shift? We can actually use the fence to measure how far the earth moved during the earthquake. So for that, I've got my trusty measuring tape. So we line up the measuring tape approximately with where that fence is. So what does the measuring tape say? It's roughly 60 inches. All right, let's go. We've got one more stop.
check out that view. This time, we're looking to the north. Our first overlook, we were looking to the south. Do you see the valley between the trees and the body of water at the bottom? That is the Crystal Springs Reservoir. You may have heard of it before. Do you notice how the valley makes a nice long straight line coming all the way to right here where we're standing? Let me show you a map of what we're looking at. We are standing right around here near the Montebello Ridge parking. What do you notice about the valley that those reservoirs are in? That straight valley is not normally found in nature and it's an indicator of earthquake action. All right, that's our last stop, so it's time to head home. We're almost back to the parking lot, and I wanted to take a chance to thank you for joining us on this exploration of the earthquake trail. I hope you learned a few things, and if you want to discover more, check out our website, www.evols.org. I'm so glad you could join the environmental volunteers today and we hope to see you again soon. Bye.